Hello and welcome to another episode of Middleware Friday for March 17th, 2017. In episode 11, we're going to be talking about logic apps and changes to the HTTP connect. In addition to the feature content, we're also going to take a look at the community corner, which includes highlights from an integration Monday session from Johan Hedberg, where he talks about continuous integration for logic apps using Team Foundation Team Services. So this is a highly sought after topic as organizations look to operationalize their logic apps and do production deployments. In addition, we're gonna take a look at one of the global integration bootcamp cities, which in this case is Porto, Portugal, put on by Sandro. And in addition, we'll talk about BizTalk 360 and their announcement of hosting Integrate 2017 in London once again. So let's jump into the featured content. In the last Logic Apps Live episode, the team talked about some changes to the HTTP connector. And these changes are related to the additional HTTP verbs that are now supported and custom relative paths. Now previously, and I'm not sure if you would have picked up on this in some of the previous Middleware Friday episodes where I used an HTTP connector to expose an endpoint and identified or noticed that I'm always using a post in those scenarios. Well, the reason is that I had to because that was the only HTTP verb that was supported. That's now changed. And as you can see, Microsoft is now supporting gets, puts, continuing to support post, patch, and delete. So this is definitely welcome news, in part due to the fact that it makes it more restful and is now cleaner. So for example, I've been in situations before where where I needed to use API management as my agility layer. And in that case, what I was doing was exposing a get to a client and then on the back end, setting the back end URL and then setting the method to be a post just due to this limitation. Now, what this prevented me from doing was being able to take advantage of using caching on get requests. So previously when we talked about connecting to SAP and getting equipment, that's master data. That doesn't change that often. You know, that's a great use case for actually being able to, to use a get and actually being able to cache those response on not actually hitting my downstream systems. I also can keep it cleaner by not having to always change my backend URL, which also makes my life inside of API management much simpler as well. In addition, I can also include relative paths, which will allow me to standardize my config and really treat Azure Logic App as resources. For example, I may have a person resource and I wanna go ahead and be able to call upon different operations for that person. It could be a get person, it could be a create a person. In, this, in that case, I'd provide a post, but now I can use standardized naming around my paths that better reflect the nature of REST. As in previous episodes, I always like to provide some level of a high level architecture diagram that explains what I'm trying to achieve. In this case, I'm gonna have some very simple devices and issuing HTTP requests. In this case, it's gonna be Postman. I'm gonna expose two different logic apps. One is going to be exposed using a get, the other one will be exposed using a delete. And from there, what we're gonna do is use logic apps to communicate with an Azure SQL database. Now, if you're keeping score at home, you'll notice that this SQL database was used in one of my earlier episodes around cognitive services and being able to post information to SQL Server in Azure. So to get started, we're gonna go into the Azure portal. We're now welcomed with the new Logic Apps Designer. We can go ahead and take advantage of common templates that are provided to us by Microsoft. In this case, we've got the HTTP request template. So this will look familiar. Once inside of a Logic App, I wanna provide a request trigger. And we'll notice that the default is still set to be a post. But we can go ahead and click Edit. And when we do so, we now see some new options exposed. So as I showed you in a previous slide, we can now choose our method. So in this case, we're gonna be talking about the get example. So we'll leave it at get. And now we can create a relative path called person. Now, something you may be asking yourself, well, if I'm gonna expose a get, can I then provide query parameters and then retrieve those query parameters? And the answer to that question is yes. So for example, this is what our URL will look like. Now I did 
to keep things simpler, get rid of this workflow ID. I've also removed the API version key, which is mandatory, plus my SAS key as well, just to keep it simple. But in this case, my relative path is person, and what I can provide is a question mark ID equals a specific number. Now, inside of Logic Apps, I can then access that query parameter through the request message, and then we're going to have a, a queries property here. Now, this isn't enough because it can't detect or determine what my inbound query parameter is, but what I can do is go into the actual workflow definition language and then provide square brackets and single quotes around ID. When I go ahead and do that, I'll see that the ID is actually exposed. Now, in this particular logic app, I'm getting an inbound request. I'm going to go ahead to get a person. I'm then going to go ahead and use the SQL connector and I'm going to use, in this case, an O data query that's going to filter by the ID that I'm passing in. When I get the response, I'm going to simply compose a response message, and I'll do that inside of a compose card. And then I can go ahead and set the body to that output and provide a response of 200, which aligns to the correct HTTP status code. So let's now jump into an actual demo using Postman, where we'll see this in action. Before we jump into Postman, let's take a quick look at our Azure SQL database. Inside this Azure SQL database, I have seven records. And what I'm going to do from, with, from Postman is I'm going to provide the first record as an ID into the HTTP query parameter. And we should see the following data attributes being returned. Now I am in Postman and we'll discover that here is my ID for the record that we just saw in the Azure SQL database. Let's go ahead and make a request for it. And what we'll see is here is our response back for this particular ID and we can see the different data attributes. Let's now jump into the second demo which focuses on the delete HTTP verb. Once again inside of a new logic app I'm going to add a request connector I'm going to change the method by accessing the advanced options to delete. Then what I'm going to do is provide a relative path of person, but this time I'm going to add a path parameter instead of a query parameter. By doing so, I'm then able to access this path parameter in other connectors, such as the execute store procedure connection that I'm going to make to Azure SQL. Now in my URL, I'm going to have whack person, whack curly braces ID, and within this parameter, that's where I'm going to provide the ID for the record that I want to delete. Here's what my complete logic app looks like inbound request over to an execute stored procedure where we pass in our path parameter, and then a very simple response using an HTTP status code of 200, which is valid for a delete request that's successful. And then we're going to provide a response message that includes our path parameter and a message indicating it's been successfully deleted. Let's now jump into that demo. So let's go to Azure SQL and we'll find a record that we want to delete. In this case, let's delete our first record. There's six in total. Let's now head to Postman. We will find our path parameter location where we'll provide this ID. You can then hit send. And sure enough, our record has been deleted. Let's just validate that to ensure there's no smoke and mirrors. Six total records. Let's hit refresh. Now we see we have five. Let's now take a look at our community corner. First up is Johan Hedberg's continuous integration for Logic Apps using Team Foundation Team Services. So this is a video. It's on the same website that you've accessed to Access Middleware Friday. The difference is you need to click on Integration Monday and then Past Events and you'll find it on March 6th. This is a topic that has a lot of people interested in it. 
while Logic Apps is a very quick and whiz bang tool where you can go ahead and create interfaces in your web browser requirements inside of the enterprise. Certainly if you want to be able to deploy your, your Logic App through a series of environments like dev, test, UAT, and prod. So what you need to do in those scenarios is actually have source code and ideally using continuous integration enable more advanced workflows such as gated release scenarios where you can actually move your configuration through these environments in a very streamlined manner which is not prone to copying and pasting if you're trying to do this using a web browser. So I encourage you to take a look at this talk by Johan. He always does a good job of presenting and this is no exception. Next up I wanted to highlight our good friend Sandro in a blog post that he has regarding the Global Integration Bootcamp held in Porto, Portugal. So I've had the opportunity to visit Sandro in Porto. It's a beautiful city. So if you're nearby, I would encourage you to get a spot while there still are spots available. Here's a quick look at the agenda. It looks like a good agenda, perhaps a little bit different than some of the other boot camps, but that's okay. The agenda does include hybrid using BizTalk 2016, unleash the power of IoT with SharePoint. So that'll be interesting, I'm sure. I wouldn't have thought of that one off the top of my head. We have BizTalk Octopus Deploy. So for people that may be looking for an alternative to TFS, as we just discussed in the previous example, um, Octopus is another option, which I know some folks have been using. And then last but not least, we've got Sandro and his session, including evaluation forms, optical character recognition, logic apps, and Power BI. So that looks pretty interesting. This is uh, sponsored by DevScope. I've had the chance to go in and meet them and they're a great organization. So if you're in the neighborhood, highly recommend that you go check out this bootcamp. Also, if you are interested in bootcamps in other cities, there's now, I believe, up to 17 different locations and the registrations are closing in fast. So I'd encourage you to, to go ahead and sign up quickly and you can go ahead and do so at globalintegrationbootcamp.com. But here we've got 12 different countries and in some of the countries, we've got multiple cities, such as the United States, where there's Chicago, New York, and Redmond, the greater Seattle area. Last but not least, don't forget to check out Integrate 2017. This is going to be the premier Microsoft integration conference in Europe, perhaps all of the world. We'll have to see about that. But this is always a good event. BizTalk360 does a great job of hosting it. It's from June 26th to 28th. There's going to be many speakers from the various Microsoft integration related project groups and a bunch of MVPs. So it looks like a solid two and a half days of content. I'll be there and I'm, and I'm very much looking forward to return to London to participate in this conference. Feedback is always welcome. You can reach me at either of these two channels. Thanks again for watching and thank you BizTalk360 for being a valued partner of the show. Please check them out for any BizTalk, Logic App, and Service Bus monitoring needs. Last, I'll leave you with some music credits. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next week.